Okay, so we're out here, a lovely location on the farm. We've got several dams, but it's a good, a good indication when you look behind me here at this swimming dam. You can swim in this, as, as, you know, normally dams, you know, depending on how you look after the soil that surrounds them, uh, dams in Queensland are usually brown and muddy. Uh, and of course, there's no chemicals on, used on this farm, so there's no chemical contamination of this dam. And it's, it's beautiful, clear water. It's a lovely body of water and, and the, there's ducks all over it. There's a few in the background there. But we're just here. We thought we'd have a nice back, backdrop and we're surrounded by, uh, just on dusk, the hundreds of tiny little insects. They're not mosquitoes. I'm not sure what they are. And there's swallows flying everywhere here. You can see the swallows behind me uh, chasing these little insects. But anyway, we'll, we'll talk before the dark. What we're going to talk about now is humates. So humates is an umbrella term for two natural acids that are most definitely a biological essentials. They are essentials for the whole regenerative approach. We're talking about humic acid and fulvic acid. And we'll talk about a little new product that's a combination of both, which is usually not found that often. Um, so let's talk about humic acid for a start. Now, it's really important that you understand the humic acid. Most people have heard the word. Um, the simple fact is that it's extracted from brown coal. Um, the most common process is to take potassium hydroxide because here's an acid, a weird acid that's only soluble in alkaline conditions, this natural acid that's found in certain types of brown coal. And so you use potassium hydroxide, which is caustic soda, with water to extract. And you can do that yourself if you chose, but you basically extract the humic acid, which is soluble. The fulvic acid is also soluble in alkaline conditions, so you extract both of them. And if you want to separate them, then you put some acid into the mix, whatever the acid that is. It could be citric acid, it could be acetic acid, it could be phosphoric acid. And the humic drops out into sludge and the golden brown liquid on the top is the fulvic. And that's how you isolate humic from fulvic. But let's talk about their respective role. Now, but first of all, we'll talk about a mistake that I see all over the world where people are buying humic acid. They've heard about all the things it can do. And I'll, I'll talk about the kind of things that can do. The two most important attributes of both humic and fulvic acid relate to their capacity to stabilize and magnify. So when I talk about magnification, two things are involved. One of them is the fact that both of those acids can collate. So the concept of collation is wrapping a biochemical claw around a positively charged mineral so that mineral can now move more easily into a negatively charged leaf without the kind of traffic jam that can often happen at the stomatal level where you rush to that little entry point and clog. And the if you've collated it with a biochemical or a chemical like EDTA, uh, that claw neutralizes the charge and you get this really, really good intake. So both of these acids are collate natural collating agents and they're considered to be amongst the most powerful natural collating agents. So that's number one, the stabilizing. Now we're not talking about cations, only cations can be collated. We're talking about the complexing potential, particularly of humic acid. Now humic acid is 10 times larger than fulvic acid and humic acid can't leach. So wonderful on these sandy soils that I'm on here at this farm, uh, nothing goes out without some humic acid behind it uh, because humic acid will hold on to things. Uh, it has a CC of 450, which is phenomenal. Now the sand here, the sandy soils here have got a CC of 5, so now you put a material with a CC of 450 that doesn't leach, uh, and you can complex, you can complex nitrate nitrogen, you can complex very leachable things like sulphur, you can complex the all important super unstable mineral called phosphorus, you put humic acid granules with phosphorus, you create a phosphate humate and the phosphorus doesn't lock up in six weeks like it normally does. You get full cycle cross phosphate availability. It's very easy for you to do half the paddock with humic acid granules uh, with your DAP, MAP and half the paddock without and then test after flowering when there's a big phosphate drawdown and you'll see the paddock without the stabilization is gone. It's locked up most of it when it's most needed whereas you'll see the continuation of that stable phosphate when you form the phosphate humate. So you say, well, how do I do that? You know, who's going to blend it in uh, to my MAP, DAP, for example, in a broadacre scenario? You can do it yourself quite roughly. It's very, very concentrated. I'll give you an idea. I'll get Carl to come over and just demonstrate this because what we oh, oh, first of all, before we get to that point, I just want to clarify because in many countries, uh, what I see uh, is people selling basically granular brown coal and calling it humic acid granules, which it kind of is. And the difference is very different when you look at the two because I'll just try and see if you can see this here. 
it's pretty hard with this light, but this is a crystalline, you, brought, you, create, you dry the liquid, you create a liquid, you dry it back to a crystal. So it's very obviously a black crystal material, and this is a black coal that's been granulated. So all of the qualities that we talk about, the formation of a phosphate humate, a urea humate, which stabilizes and magnifies the urea, the, the formation of chelates and so forth, that doesn't happen with brown coal. It's a slow release. All of the things we talk about, the immediate root growth stimulation, the immediate stimulation with humic acid of beneficial fungi in the soil, that's not happening with the brown coal. It's a slow release. It can take as long as three to five years to release. It's still a value, but it's not the same material. So don't confuse the two. If you're trying to put it with the starting fer starter fertilizer, the brown coal will not do it. Now, we talk, usually talk about 5% inclusion of soluble humic acid granules. This is the soluble one, not the insoluble brown coal in a granule. Uh, and so just to give you an idea of how, how much, we've got just one, a couple of granules there, a couple sure. of two mil granules. So we just drop them in here and you'll watch as we continue to talk, uh, th them dissolve and this glass will be pitch black within a period of about two minutes. So we'll just leave that sitting down there and you'll see. So the point here is that if you put in your 5%, even roughly, even if you say you've got a one ton bag of DAP or MAP, uh, perhaps going into a, a fertilizer box, uh, you slow down the chute and you just fan it in. You know that you're going to put 50 kilos of soluble humic granules per one ton. That's the 5% rate. So you just kind of loosely fan it in and mix it yourself uh, as you're emptying the, the fertilizer bag. Alternatively, you can do it on the ground with, with bulk DAP and so forth. So it doesn't have to be this perfect blend because this stuff is so concentrated. You can see it's starting to, to, uh, to dissolve there at the moment, turn it into a black thing, and you'll see it'll just gradually turn the whole water black. Um, but so if a granule lands this close to a DAP granule and then you get rain on it, if you put that granule on the ground and pour water on it, you'll have a patch this wide of black. So it'll, it'll very easily grab and complex and form that phosphate humate. Um, uh, even with a rough mix. So that's the important thing to know with humic acid. So let's look at humic acid uh, in comparison to fulvic acid. As we said, fulvic acid 10 times smaller, but also all the things that humic does, fulvic does a little quicker, except it doesn't stay for very long in the soil. So that can be a value with what we've done on this farm. This farm had a a long history of, of, of chemical use. And so we came into this, this farm and the soil life counts were down and the fungal counts were down and you know, a lot of fungicides used and so forth. And we threw out all the chemicals, but we had to clean up that soil. And so we did a thing called a fulvic flush. So here's soluble fulvic acid powder. This is using three kilos. We actually went higher, but three kilos, a lovely plant growth response with three kilos of fulvic acid. Normally you're using half a kilo to one kilo of soluble powder, three kilos, Fulvic acid has a CC of 1400. So it sucks in the tiny amounts of chemical residues that are really compromising your, your crop and your soil. Um, and it's the most powerful bacterial stimulant. So when we look at things like glyphosate, well, a whole range of chemicals that we want to get rid of the residues, uh, what, what breaks down those residues, what biodegrades those residues is inevitably bacteria rather than fungi or protozoa or whatever. And so bacteria love fulvic acid. And so when you uh, put that large dose of fulvic acid with a 1400 cc first of all you mix it uh, sorry that's if you're using it with a herbicide to clean up you're just using this large amount this three kilos and it's referred to as the fulvic flush because it sucks in with its huge absorbency at 1400 cc the highest known cc sucks in those tiny residues uh, then like bees to a honey pot the bacteria arrive because they love fulvic. It's the most powerful fulvic stimulant. They don't like the chemicals, but they'll eat us like the spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down in terms of fast tracking the biodegradation. And then, which isn't good, but still, if you try to clear that chemicals, what doesn't get biodegraded, and some things don't biodegrade, like dieldrin being one of them, um, but, but, it, but it will actually move them out of your, at least out of that, of that thing. It will actually, fulvic acid leaches, and it'll take the chemicals with it. So it's a very good cleanup strategy that, you know, the EPA will look at humic fulvic acid for cleaning up chemicals, for cleaning up even oil spills, all sorts of contaminants. Uh, it's the primary thing that people move to. So wonderful tool from that perspective. So fulvic acid and humic acid both collate, they both magnify uptake. So the second magnification story is the story of cell sensitization, which there are nine, maybe more published papers quantifying this uh, increase of the, the, the permeability of the cell membrane. So things go through the cell wall and then 
then through the cell membrane into the cell for it to be utilized. And the cell membrane is a very important structure that governs all sorts of things, including cell messaging. Uh, and basically that cell membrane becomes more permeable so that you can take in up to a third, between 30 and 34% more. So whatever you combine with humic and fulvic, you're going to have a third better response. So you can have a third less glyphosate when you put fulvic acid with it, for example. Uh, but every, every, every fertilizer is going to have that enhanced response. And you do have to be aware of that when you're using humic acid. Now, you can use humic acid granules the maximum rate is 20 kilos per hectare. Now, that in this country will cost you like $60. But I'm working with a large group of potato growers and they use massive amounts. They use two tons of NPK fertilizer planting and then side dress. Uh, and I said to them, well, if you're going to, they said, we want to try that high rate. And I said, if you're going to put on 20 kilos of humic acid, you've got to pull back significantly on that amount of fertilizer because you're actually going to overload things. Uh, and so most of them pulled back a third of their fertilizer and got a tremendous result at the end of the season. But one of the guys said, no, I'm just going to get a bigger response with my two tons. And he overloaded everything. All the leaf tests came back with overloads of NPK and so forth. So you've got to be aware that you have to reduce fertilizers if you're using high amounts. If you're using small amounts and just want to make them better, fair enough if you're using 50 kilos of DAP in a dryland broadacre scenario, keep it at 50 kilos and magnify the response of that 50 kilos. Create your phosphate humate and that phosphate of course is uptaken a third more efficiently and then simultaneously when you put that with your DAP or your MAP you've got the stimulation of all important mycorrhizal fungi. So if you happen to have done a seed treatment humic acid is the most powerful fungal stimulant so you've got that effect as well as stabilizing your phosphate you've got the effect of stimulating rather than burning because DAP when it ionizes sizzles up mycorrhizal fungi and so you buffer that burn and you actually feed the guys you'd normally sizzle up so it's a wonderful inclusion that can literally be free because you can say okay I'm going to take off the amount of fertilizer the cost of the humic acid which say five kilos is 15 to 20 dollars where depending on where you are in the world of soluble humic acid granules uh, you can say I'm going to put my five kilos on this so I'm going to take that 15 kilos off $15 off my DAP bill and you'll always do better. Just do a little paddock and try it. You will be really impressed. So that's humic acid. Fulvic acid does many of the same things, but the one it does them faster. So it's really good on the leaf. A, a great feature of fulvic acid is its compatibility with everything. Whereas humic acid can't go with acid things. It can in the granule combined with your fertilizer because it doesn't matter about it clogging filters and so forth in a spray tank. But fulvic acid goes with everything. So you can just, you can collate you can take calcium nitrate, put some soluble fulvic acid powder with it, and you've got a calcium fulvate. You can take a kilo of zinc sulfate for a zinc deficiency per hectare, one kilo of zinc sulfate, 300 grams of this powder, and you've got a zinc fulvate. You can take manganese sulfate, put some fulvic acid, manganese fulvate. Uh, wonderful do-it-yourself collation, much, much uh, less costly than traditional uh, collated fertilizer. And we sell collated fertilizers. I'm telling you, you can do this yourself really, really cost-effectively. So fulvic... Um, stimulates bacteria so when we talk from a biological perspective it's much smaller and bacteria of course are much smaller wonderfully powerful bacterial stimulants so phosphate solubilizes nitrogen fixes love fulvic acid whereas the humic acid and that's what makes it so important because so many people need fungi in the soil and humic acid is the most powerful fungal stimulant so it's got a tremendous role to play in that context um, fulvic a couple of other strange things that it does that humic doesn't do um, one of them is, the, is this weird thing that people call it the second sun. And, and it's not even explained, even though there are papers quantifying that it happens, is that in long periods of cloudy weather, when of course you, everything grinds to a halt because you don't have the main driver of photosynthesis, which is sunlight. Remember photosynthesis is water, CO2 and sunlight, equally important. And now you missed one of the, probably the most important of the three part equation. Uh, so everything just grinds to a halt. You're not making glucose, you're not growing stuff. And what people do, and it's very popular now in Europe is foliar spray fulvic acid during that long period of grey weather and everything starts growing as if it had sunlight and hence the term the second sun. Now I've seen it on golf courses uh, where they've had problems with 
some of the course members have complained about these iconic trees that have got yellow grass under them, and so we don't want that yellow grass. And the f sprayed foli uh, fulvic acid in that shady area with no sunlight or limited sunlight, and the grass greens up as if there was sunlight. So it's a strange but w and weird and quite wonderful attribute of fulvic acid. So fulvic can be used to flush things. Fulvic can leach where, where and it stimulates fungi, and, uh, bacteria rather, and humic stimulates this non-leachable substance. Uh, can complex things and hold them and they won't leach and so forth. So, uh, but the ideal story would be to have a combination of both. And that hasn't been possible uh, because uh, humic acid is not compatible with most things you might want to mix it with and we just changed that. So we have a new product called Folvex, and it's one of my favorites. Uh, Folvex is a combination of half and half, 50% humic acid, 50% fulvic acid, and it's an 100% water-soluble powder. So there's not any levels, little bits of undissolved stuff or whatever, and it's compatible with everything. So suddenly you can have the best of both worlds. There's multiple studies showing the, the, the inclusion of the two acids and the potential benefits because there's a synergy when you combine the two, and now you can put them with things to magnify and stabilize them, and you can put it with anything. So wonderful for fertigation because everything that we fertigate normally is acidic. Everything we use in agriculture is based on nitric acid, phosphoric acid or sulfuric acid. Think through it. It's everything. Uh, and you can't put humic with any of those because of the acid base. Well, now you can. Now you can stabilize and magnify anything by putting half a kilo to a kilo of this soluble fulvex powder with your fertigation. It really is something quite special. Or you can foliar spray with it and collate. You can you know, put it with your urea and that enables you now, because urea humate is created and, and you've stopped volatilization, you increase the uptake of the urea and the performance and buffered any burning potential with the nitrogen. But now you can put other things with that urea. You might want to put a bit of manganese at that time of the season. You might want a bit of potassium sulfate. You might want to have some zinc. Those things now can be combined with Folvex, and so you've got the humic Folvex together. It's a wonderful outcome, and it's an exciting product. And so the one thing we, we didn't go back to was our glass with the two little one mil or two mil granules in it. Uh, it's now pitch black tar, and that's the concentration of this. You make a liquid, you, you kiln dry or sun dry back into a soluble granule, and it's not brown coal in a granule. It's the soluble humic acid granules, and look at it, it's, it's pitch black. Uh, and that's just two granules. And so you understand how concentrated that is and how valuable it can be when we include it with, with granular fertilizers to create that magnification and stabilization. So just on dusk, a beautiful evening here, <laughs> insects everywhere. Uh, insects, because we've got an organic farm, there's the whole orchard's full of insects. Uh, it's the whole place is, is teeming with life. We'll show you some of the schools of kangaroos a little later. But we're going out for a, a really nice night out now for a, for a dinner. We've filmed all today and we're going to all day today and we'll film all day tomorrow. Uh, thanks for watching.